A blue sky turns black. Put some dark ones moving quick. No warning, no thunder. And a dangerous storm descends on two fishermen. It was like on top of us. Then nature's fury unleashes in a flash. I see a big puff of blue smoke coming from a boat and no fishermen. Strikes a father and son. I thought my feet were blown off. Felt like someone had set me on fire. Surviving one of nature's most powerful forces oh. will take a miracle. Really? Is this the way it ends? In the wild, when things go bad, they go bad fast. Without warning, your life can hang by a thread. Adventurer and survivor Craig DiMartino fought back from his own wilderness disaster to reclaim his life. Now Craig meets other courageous outdoorsmen who beat the odds and return from their own fight to survive. Hi, I'm Craig DiMartino. Time shared by fathers and sons in the outdoors is an age-old tradition. One generation passing down their love of hunting and fishing to the next. For Gabe Neal, sharing a love of bass fishing with his son Christian meant treasure time spent together on their bass boat. But when lightning struck Lake Harrisonville near Peculiar, Missouri, that treasure time turned into an unthinkable nightmare. For Christian, growing up meant spending a lot of time outdoors. I've always grown up outdoors, whether it was by choice or being told to go outside. He might not have known it at the time, but keeping the boys busy outdoors was part of Gabe and Sonia's parenting plan. We've always thought, you know, it's hard to get in trouble when you're in a bass boat. For Christian, fishing became more than a sport that he shared with his dad. Fishing is the number one time we bond. We get time alone just to talk one-on-one. -on -one. one of their favorite fishing spots was Harrisonville Lake, about 45 minutes outside of Kansas City, Missouri. It's pretty peaceful. That's where we've had the best luck, and uh, it's close to the house. It's like four miles away. It's June 7th of 2009. Great service today, guys, huh? Yeah. It may sound cliche, but pretty normal day. Uh, we had church on that Sunday. For this afternoon, what do you guys want to do? Front coming in, I think it'd be a good day to go fishing. Yeah, we should go like Harrison. So we say, uh, you know, why don't we go fishing? Right at the last minute, I had just decided and told them I'm just going to stay home. Cook your favorite. And I will cook your favorite. And Christian said, no, Mom. No, Mom, I want you to go. And I said, son, just go hang out with your dad. You're not going to be gone long. I'll see you when you get back, and we'll have dinner together. You sure? Yes, I'm positive. You guys have fun. All right, thank you. We'll catch you a big one. Bye, guys. Bye, hon. And I remember Christian walked back in the door. OK, Mom. We're taking off. OK, bud. And he, he, uh, he kissed me, and he said, I love okay. you, Mom. See you in a bit. You go fishing all the time, so it kind of threw me back. Weather was fair, but I mean, there was bluebird skies, uh, maybe a cloud here or there. It was around two o'clock when Gabe and Christian got to the lake and unloaded the boat. You're straight on in, right, pal? Yeah, keep coming. Straight back, buddy? I kind of knew in the afternoon there was a front coming through, so every good fisherman knows when you're expecting low pressure, that's when the fish are going to bite the best. We got on the boat, pulled our rods out. Let's head around the point to our usual spot. Okay. We started a beeline for a point that's directly across from the boat ramp that we always fish. Any luck yet there, young man? Not getting anything. This is a warm one today, huh, bud? The fishing was pretty slow. It was hot. Probably try another spot here in a little bit. While we were fishing, there was no major clouds. I mean, it was pretty out. And then just a torrential rain came directly over us. We had just enough time to get our raincoats on before we were just soaked. So we quit fishing and started back across the lake. They only passed one boat on the way to shore, but before either reached land, the rainstorm lit up. Looks like the clouds are clearing away. We might be able to get some fishing in again. We were trying to get off the lake, and then it let up, and then we said, oh, we can fish a little bit longer. And then all of a sudden, it, it popped up again. So head back to shore, guys. So we whipped it around and started going back to the boat ramp. And you know, I looked over the, my shoulder, and there's a boat out to the side. You know, we didn't see any lightning, but we did start to hear thunder. 
some dark ones rumbling in, moving in quick too. And it just got black. I mean, it was like on top of us. I know I had read about, you know, pop-up storms and how they kind of just come out of nowhere. And it did. Probably should get off the water. Yeah, we're headed that way anyways. I'll keep full speed. Christian set the trolling motor to take them back to shore, but continued to cast. Last thing I remember, I was getting ready to cast. And then nothing. I don't know, it was just black. It sounded like a mortar round in Iraq going off. I turned around, looked over my shoulder, and I see a big puff of blue smoke coming from the boat and no fishermen. It was just another father-son day of fishing for Gabe and Christian Neal, when in a split second, a bolt of lightning came out of the sky and hit them. Never saw a flag. It's just immediately getting hit with a sledgehammer and being backwards in the water. I thought the boat blew up. First thing I remember was raindrops on my face. As I kind of came to a little more, I thinking to myself, why am I in the back of the boat? Andy Flippin, his girlfriend Taryn, and his dad Stanley were on the only other boat nearby. Taryn, uh, Andy's girlfriend, she said something like, they're, they're both, both smoking. smoking. And there's their boat that a couple of seconds before had a, two men standing up fishing in it, and there it is empty. Oh, they got hit. Christian was flat out on the floor of the boat. His father was sinking under the water. Shocked by the electrical charge, Gabe couldn't move his legs. He was drowning. So this is Harrisonville Lake. Craig Harrisonville. met up with Gabe at Harrisonville Lake, where he offered Craig his unique perspective on this harrowing experience. You're in the water and your legs aren't working. Were you? feeling like this is it, like I'm not gonna get back up to the top, I'm gonna die here. It was kind of strange, I never blacked out. And you know, you can see it getting darker and darker and you can kind of see the top of the water kind of uh, reflection or glass. It was really kind of peaceful in a way, but it, your mind is going a thousand miles an hour and you're asking yourself, you know, really? Is this the way it ends? And then immediately, I, you know, I went to, you know, God, if I've done anything wrong, please forgive me. And then it was like he flipped a switch and I was, you know, where's Christian? We were standing side by side, where's my son? And at that point is when I started really digging with my arms to, to get to the top of the water. The trolling motor was still pushing the boat towards shore. When you came up, what did you see? All I could make out was his head, and he was still smoking. Oh. As a dad, I saw my son smoldering. I mean, were you? was that terrifying? Oh. Well, I have to admit, there was a split second where I saw him smoking, he wasn't moving, and, and I thought he was dead. Oh. And immediately, your heart just starts, you know, just sinking. Oh. And then I heard him grunt. Uh, that's the sweetest sound a dad could hear, because at that point, I knew he was alive. Christian was miraculously alive, and he was slowly realizing the seriousness of his injuries. You know, it's kind of a scary moment when you lean forward and push myself up and see my legs and touch my legs and feel like they're not there. Right there yeah. I, you know, I, I couldn't grasp what had happened. You know, I remember hitting my leg and I was like, I know my legs are right there, I can see it, but I can't right. feel it. And I'm thinking, I'm only 17 and now I'm gonna be in a wheelchair the rest of my life. While Christian lay paralyzed in the boat, <sighs> his father kept going under like a lead weight. But I didn't have enough strength to hold on to the boat. <sighs> Just total weakness at that point. Went under a couple times 
and then just couldn't hold on anymore. The trolling motor was making it even harder for Gabe to pull himself back on board. But in the background, I could hear somebody screaming, and I knew it wasn't myself, and I knew it wasn't Christian. The screaming was coming from Andy Flippin's boat. We were only about 50 yards away when it happened. We got up there, and my dad jumped out. My girlfriend's screaming her head off, scared. I got her on the phone to 911, got out of our boat and into their boat. Here we go, here we go, here we go. We got help coming. My dad helped hold Gabe in position. While Stanley struggled to push Gabe into the boat, Andy pulled. So we're trying to get Gabe up in the boat. Please hurry, send someone. My dad finally pushed, and I finally pulled just right. He's got a fish hook in the back of his leg. And then my dad let go of the boat. Oh, no. We spun out into the lake. The trolling motor was going at high speed, and there was no way to control the Neil's boat. I'm alone on the boat, and we're just going in a circle. Christian was still laying immobilized in the back of the boat. And then my face really started burning. I don't know what happened. And I looked down, my bathing suit was shredded. The smell was just something you'll never forget. I'm sure I was smelling the skin that was burnt because my arm and my hands were burnt bad. And then everything went black again. Hey, hey, there, throw me a bottle of water. And then the next time I opened my eyes, someone was pouring water on my head, and I didn't recognize who it was. And then I remember someone said, y'all were struck by lightning. Stay with us, Kristen. I thought, oh, Lord. Stay with us. Don't go to sleep, Kristen. What in the world did we do to get struck by lightning? Still confused and in shock, Gabe Neal and his son Christian were slowly taking in the information. Oh. They had just been struck by lightning. They're both smoking. Oh, they got hit. Andy Flippin, an Iraqi war vet with combat lifesaver training, was in a nearby boat and jumped into action. Please hurry, send someone. I'm taking care of Gabe. He's concerned about a fish hook in his leg. I got a hook. Oh. I pushed the hook on through, cut it off with a pair of pliers, and then pulled it out. Ah. At that time, I'm trying to get control of the boat, only to realize something the cable linkage, something had broken. So I had to physically lean over the front of the boat and grab the head of the trolling motor under the water and steer us. Hey, hey. I started splashing water on Christian. Ah. Andy knew exactly what to do. Instead of lake water, he took bottled water, put the burns out. What school do you go to? Uh, Raypack. You and he started there? asking these weird questions, like what high school do you go to? Do you know where you are? Lake Harris. It was just his training. He was just trying to keep him from going in shock. When the paramedics arrived, they immediately started working on Christian. All right, can you open up your mouth for me and stick out your tongue? Okay, just squeeze my fingers real quick. I never knew how powerful lightning could be. Can I push? Hips? I can't feel them. Can you feel your legs? I've never seen anything like it. I saw a lot in Iraq. While all this was happening, Sonia was preparing that special dinner she promised her boys. I had the TV on and it come across and it said breaking news. Good afternoon. I just want to get you caught up with some severe weather. We've had a thunderstorm pop up out of nowhere over Harrisonville Lake. There's been some lightning in the air. And my heart just sank. And um, I ran downstairs and my phone was standing down here and I started dialing Gabe's number. And he didn't, he didn't answer. So I started texting Christian, no answer, no answer. And I kept calling, kept calling. And I went and sat out on the front porch and I was praying. And uh, the phone rang. But are you okay? There's a storm on Lake Harrisonville. There, there, it's Gabe. Well, it was Gabe on the other end. And I said, well, where's, where's Christian? Christian? Dear, and okay. he said, dear, we're okay. Well, when you tell a mother this, that's been texting, we're okay, that's the wrong thing to start with. No, I want to talk to 
Christian now? Where's Christian? And he said, dear, we've been hit by lightning. And I started screaming. No, put him on the phone. I want to talk to Christian now. I heard Gabe say, we've got to let him talk to his mom. All I heard was, mom. But are you OK? And the paramedics took the phone. Mrs. Neal, we have your son and we have your husband. We are leaving in two separate ambulances. All I can remember is I jumped in Gabe's little green Del so and took off. All right, guys, I got no pulse. Christian was in real trouble. His heart was beating irregularly. Did you ever feel like the big possibility here is I could die? I, I can't explain the tiredness that I felt. I can't hold on anymore. You know, I, was, I was pretty well ready to go, but I mean, nobody really wants to die. You know, I was so tired. It was almost as if that moment right before you go into a real deep sleep, I, all I could do is just lay there and say, if this is it, this is it. I saw Christian in the ambulance. Okay, shocking. They shocked him, and it was just like in the movies. Oh, my kid, my kid, how's Christian? He's being taken care of by son. another ambulance. The paramedics working on you, paramedics working on Christian, um, but they split you up in the ambulances. Uh, thank you. Please, tell me. I know, as soon as you know anything, we'll let you know. When you see those doors shut, were you thinking, gosh, I, this could be the last time I saw my son alive? Absolutely, all the way to the hospital. My kid, you know? You're like asking about your son, how's my kid doing, how's my kid doing? And, and the paramedic kept saying. And we're gonna wanna focus on you as best we can now. No, I appreciate that, but my kid is, is, is everything. And we're going to the same hospital. hospital. But that didn't ease the anxiety or the, you know, the thoughts of, you know, hopefully not the last time I seen my kid. Last time I saw him, he wasn't moving, and he didn't know how my kid's doing, please. Gabe and Christian Neal defied the odds and survived being struck by lightning. They kind of wheeled us together. And we're kind of facing opposite directions, and we kind of did the hand grab. Hey, Christian, you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. How are you doing? Good, good. Don't worry about me. They're going to take good care of us here, I promise. And what was that like? It was kind of weird. I kept trying to apologize. You know, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It's no one's fault. Why were you apologizing? I mean, that's the guilt, I guess, of a dad that, you know, just you might have done something that cost us. I love you, bud. I love you, too. I'm going to get better. Back up fishing before you know it. Okay. Now looking back, I, I don't think I did anything wrong. I think we did everything right up until the point where we stood up and started fishing again. How are you feeling? My legs are tingling. Well, that's a good sign that you're starting to get some tingling in your leg. Gabe got the feeling back in his legs pretty quickly, but Christian had second and third degree burns on his face, arm, and stomach. Christian. Oh, don't touch him. You've only got a second. I remember walking in and I didn't even recognize him. I love you, bud. He was charred. I kissed him on the on the hair, and it was burnt. I'll be right outside. You know, it's a rare club to live in. Um, Dr. Webb he said he'd been in medicine over 36 years, and he'd seen three victims, and we were the second and third victim, and the first one didn't live. Christian's recovery was slow and painful, yet remarkable. His skin healed so well, he never needed skin grafts. For a mother, you know, you, you can't stop the pain. No, 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 please stop. I'm sorry, buddy. I mean, I remember going in and I had to do his dressings twice a day. Oh. And I remember going in, giving him his pain medicine, and then I would go back in 30 minutes and he would lay there and just cry. And I would leave the room, shut the door and just bawl. <laughs> So then I would get myself together and go back in. Try to get some sleep, okay? Christian's graphite fishing pole had acted like a lightning rod, directing the electrical charge into his body. When it struck me, it blew a hole in the bottom of the rod, and that's where it went into my stomach, where I had the real severe burn on my stomach. Today, it is a grim reminder of how close he came to dying. Oh, they got hit. God has a plan for everything. That's, that's why we were there. I'm glad we were there. I'm glad we were able to help. Oh, hang on, let's go. I, I've got PTSD from Iraq and doing something good and helping someone with their struggles. Oh. It just, 
it helps you feel better about yourself and about why you're still here. I feel very blessed that they survived it. I love you, bud. As far as being in a club of lightning strikes, no. It's not anything I would wish on my worst enemy. So what's it like for you to be back out here at the lake and kind of looking at the spot where you guys were? What's that feel like to you? You know, we, we share something here that most father and son, you know, never get a chance to. I wish that nobody would have to share, but uh, definitely it's a special place for us. Right. But we normally get here, we think about fishing. So that uh, kind of takes the emotion out of it. Beautiful day, though. And I promise you, you're looking at the sky. And, you're, you know, if clouds come up, it's time to get off the water. But I definitely think we're blessed. When you look at the statistics with lightning strikes, and, and they're pretty staggering. Death, usually some kind of disability, and yet as you sit here today, you've got some scarring and you came through pretty unaffected. How do you how do you explain that? There's no other explanation for the way all this worked out other than miracles. I mean, if God's hand wasn't in it. You know, I wouldn't be here, my dad wouldn't be here, we'd, you know, we'd be six feet under at this point. Lightning does strike, killing an average of 51 people a year in the U.S. But according to the National Weather Service, the odds of being struck by lightning in a given year are literally almost one in a million. Of those struck, 10% are killed, and 90% have varying degrees of disability. We can become fascinated with lightning odds and statistics, but for Christian and Gabe, it was a power far greater than luck, which brought them through their electrical encounter without a single lasting effect. Theirs was a miraculous fight to survive.